Hello and welcome to the Fleurange podcast. Today I have a few finished projects to talk about, I have a few works in progress, and I have a few fun acquisitions to share. So let's get started. Hello, my name is Madison. I'm coming to you from southwestern Ontario, Canada, where I live with my husband and our son. You can find me as Fleurange Apparel here on YouTube, as well as on Instagram and on Etsy. On this channel, I mostly like to share about my knitting and sometimes my sewing too, because I sell my handmade project bag. So sometimes I like to give you some updates on my new projects there. My main goal on this channel is to talk about and to showcase size inclusive patterns and designers, because I think it is extremely important to promote those standards. And I want as many people as possible to be able to knit all of the things that I talk about. I am hoping to share these knitting podcast episodes about once a month. It's been a little bit, I think it's been closer to six weeks since my first one. Um, but I just want to try to stay consistent to keep you updated with my projects and to keep myself accountable because I feel like I will try harder to meet deadlines that I have actually told people there are deadlines for. I have a bad habit of uh, reaching for the serotonin and just casting on projects on a whim because the yarn is pretty or I'm so excited about the new project that I forget about the ones I'm already working on. So hopefully having this podcast will help keep me accountable because um, I'm more likely to finish something that I have, you know, people wanting to know about. I'm really glad that so many people enjoyed my last pattern roundup video. I had I had so much fun making it and researching the patterns and stuff like that. So I'm hoping to do those uh, pretty consistently as well. Um, the next pattern that I am looking for for my own wardrobe is a cardigan. So I think that will probably be the next pattern roundup I do. But if there are any patterns that you are having a hard time finding a size inclusive, pattern for or if there's anything in particular that you are looking for just let me know in the comments below and I will be happy to do a pattern roundup for it. So I think that's all of the things that I wanted to touch on so let's get into my finished projects. Um, the first one that I am the most excited about is my finished Kerr sweater. Um, I think it's pronounced Kerr, it's K-E-R-R -R, but I also heard Rebecca pronounce it Kerr um, she is Scottish, I'm pretty sure, so I don't know if it's an accent thing or if that's actually how you pronounce it, but I've been calling it the Kerr sweater. So please correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. But this is it. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. I'm so in love with it. Uh, it is so warm, like so warm. I think this is going to have to be an outerwear layer. Um, I brought this on a recent trip that my family took to Denmark and it was about five degrees Celsius and I was wearing this outside and like after a walk I was sweaty. Like it, it's so warm. Um, I used Wooly Knit British Wool in the color uh, cream and indigo blue and I just think that the contrast is perfect. I love how it turned out. The It was really easy to do color work with because it's so sticky, like it's non superwash. It's 100% British wool. And just look at those floats. Like they're perfect. I, I don't wanna toot my own horn. Like I don't think, I think it's a, maybe a combination of me and the wool. <laughs> um, I tried really hard to keep my tension consistent and everything with the color work. This is the most intensive color work project I have done to date. Um, part of it was knitting flat because this like you knit the front and the back flat and then you join in the round underneath the underarms is a drop shoulder construction. So this top color work portion is knit flat because you're knitting the top flat and then the rest of it is knit in the round. Um, so I've never knit color work flat before, but it turned out okay, I think, like the tension and everything. I would say it was a little bit trickier to do the color work on the pearl side, but not impossible because obviously I did it. <laughs> Just takes a little maybe more thought than doing it in the round because you have to remember to go back and forth 
instead of following the chart the same direction all the way through. Um, so the original pattern only has this color work section without, so I added just a little bit at the top and at the bottom here, but this center part is the original color work section. It comes with two different options, uh, a thinner color work and a, yeah, a narrower color work and a wider color work. Um, I did the narrower one because um, I decided to add my own color work charts to it. Um, my goal with this sweater was to make it look like the porcelain sweater. Unfortunately, that pattern is not size inclusive, so I didn't want to knit it. Um, actually, I'm not even sure if it went up to my bust size. I, I'm not sure. I just, I know it's not size inclusive, so I didn't look much further into it. So I decided to take the Kerr sweater by Rebecca Klo um, of the Crayabea because it is size inclusive and just add some color work charts to it. So I added this top one and then I added a little bit to the one that comes with the pattern and then I added another one along the bottom. Kind of looks like snowflakes. That just, I think it turned out so nice. It's definitely very reminiscent of the porcelain sweater, which I love. Um, the sleeves are just a little bit too short. When I blocked it, I really stretched out the color work widthwise to make sure that the tension like really sat nicely. And I think I'm going to need to block the sleeves again and just stretch them out a little bit because it sits like about bracelet length but because like the cuff is pretty wide so it almost it looks shorter like you know how when you have like wide pants and they're short for some reason they look shorter than if you had like skinny jeans on and they were shorter I don't know if that makes any sense but um so I might need to do that but I knit absolutely everything to pattern the only thing I changed is I did a one by one rib on the collar and on the sleeves and on the hem because that's what the porcelain sweater has. Uh, it has a split hem. I don't remember if there's a split hem in the pattern or if I just did it myself, but it's really easy to change a non-split hem into a split hem. You just knit back and forth and then knit the back back and forth instead of doing it all in the round. So that's a pretty easy modification. Sorry, there's a lot of my hair stuck to this. That's the only thing with this wool is it is so sticky that um, when I was knitting it, I shed a lot of hair. And so some of my hairs kind of got knitted into it. And even now, like when I lose hair and I'm wearing this sweater, it kind of like works its way in to the wool, but that's okay. Um, one thing I will say about the Wooly Knit British Wool is I wouldn't necessarily call it next to skin soft. Um, I always wear a shirt underneath it, mostly because also like I kind of knit it to be outerwear. Um, I think it'd be too warm to wear inside unless your house is very, very cold. But I have noticed, so I've worn this probably five or six times now and as I wear it it gets softer so it was like a little bit prickly before but now that like the wool is kind of wearing in it's getting a lot softer which I'm super happy about because I was a little nervous about how scratchy it was when I first knit it um the other thing is so it's not like super pilly but because there's such a high contrast between the white and the blue, I do find that the blue fibers kind of are getting grabbed by the white fibers. So I haven't had to depill it or anything yet, but you can, I, I can see that it's being worn a little bit. But um, again, I am fine with that. So you can kind of see on this sleeve here, it's a little pilled but overall, it's not bad at all. It still looks very, very nice. 
So I just want to give some details on the actual, like on the original pattern. It comes in 11 sizes from 70 centimeters to 170 centimeter bust or 27 to 67 inches with two to 10 centimeters or one to four inches of ease recommended. So I knit mine with one inch of ease, which I think um, I like a lot. I didn't want to have like a huge oversized. It definitely doesn't have the same feel as the porcelain sweater because I'm pretty sure the porcelain sweater has like eight to 10 inches of positive ease. Um, it's definitely like oversized, but um, like in hindsight, I kind of wish I had gone a size up, but also I only have, I think, 20 grams. Yeah, I only have 20 grams left of the cream color. I bought the cones, which is a 500 gram cone of yarn that I held double. I have 20 grams left, so I definitely did not have enough yarn left over for me to be able to go up a size. I would have had to buy more, which the fact that it comes from the UK and I have to get it all shipped all the way to Canada, like there's shipping charges and time and whatever, it's fine. I'm very happy with how it fits. If I did it again, I would probably give myself just a little bit more ease. Um, for my size, I knit size seven, which gives, which gave me one inch of positive ease. I used 480 grams of the cream color and I used 150 grams of the blue color. Um, obviously I used more of the blue color and less of the white color than what the pattern says because I have a lot more color work included on mine. But I would say that the yardages for my size were very accurate to what I actually ended up needing. Like totals, the total yardage that I needed was very accurate to pattern, just split up a little bit differently because I had so much more color work. And yeah, that is my curse sweater. The next three finished projects that I have, I do not have with me because I already gifted them. Um, I knit, I'll put pictures of them up on the screen though. Uh, when we were in Denmark, I went to a local yarn shop and I bought some insanely neon yarn to knit my brother and his wife and their son matching hats. So I got a Lang Merino 120 in like a neon orange color to knit my brother and their son matching hats. And then I got a BC Garn neon pink. Uh, what's the color? shocking pink the orange is fluorescent orange by lang and then the pink was uh shocking pink by bc guard and it's their baby alpaca and i knit her a headband that i think turned out super duper cute so for the hats what i did was i didn't want to do a full ribbed hat because i wanted to get it done quickly because when we got home from our trip their anniversary was two days later so i wanted to make sure that it was done and obviously knitting at least for me maybe i shouldn't say obviously but for me knitting stockinette is faster than knitting one by one rib all that to say um i followed the pearl soho classic ribbed hat numbers and cast on the number for the child size and adult medium, I think. And did about a one inch brim of ribbing and then just did plain stockinette and then followed the decrease rate again in the Pearl Soho pattern. And it turned out perfect. They fit great. Um, for the headband, all I did was I cast on, I had a, a small circular needle, like a nine inch circular. So I just cast on enough stitches, like 64 stitches, kind of like a sock, um, and then knit a tube until it could wrap around my head. And then I kind of twisted it and sewed the ends down to kind of make like a, a twisty thing, but turned out great. And it's so soft um, and it's shockingly pink and just obnoxiously bright, which I think is perfect for all three of them. Um, the next finished project that I want to show you is a sock. 
This is my own design that um, is still in the works, but I'm hoping to put a tester call out soon. Um, if I have put the tester application out, I will link it in the description box below. Um, so if you would like to test knit this, you can uh, put in the application. So it is a color work leg, but then a plain stockinette foot, which I think is a really nice balance between color work and then just easy sock knitting, which I really, really like. Like I finished this, um, I finished this in three days, <laughs> which seems a little crazy, but to be fair, um, I was on vacation and my son was sick, which meant I basically could just sit around all day knitting. So eh, like not expecting anybody else to knit it in three days, but I managed to knit it in three days. Um, it comes in five sizes from uh, extra small to an extra large. And I also include instructions on how to do mix and match sizing. If you have a difference in circumference between your leg and your foot. So for me, I have a wider calf, but a pretty narrow foot. And so the first few pairs of socks that I knit never, they never fit me properly. And I couldn't figure out why until I realized like, well, yeah, my, it was always too big on my foot because my foot is a lot smaller than my calf. So I have included two different ways of narrowing the foot in comparison to the leg because um, I think that this is a problem that a lot of people have that um, I've heard people talk about, but I've never really seen a pattern address that issue. I'm sure there are patterns out there. I know that there are some like perfect fit sock courses, but those are very expensive. So I just wanted to give people the option in a pattern to uh, just be able to mix and match a little bit. Um, so the goal for the sock pattern is the Fleur sock and the instructions are just for a plain vanilla stockinette sock, heel flap, a slip stitch, heel flap and gusset and a four point toe because that is the toe that I found has fit my foot the best. And then you don't have to do any Kitchener stitch, which I think is a plus personally. Um, and then based on the stitch counts for those socks, I've created some color work charts that you can um, mix and match and do however you want. You can come up with your own combination or you can knit the combination that I did. So this is the Crown of Daisies um, color work expansion. So there's four charts, one, two, three, four. And uh, in this one, I decided to do five chart repeats because that gives you about a 60 stitch leg, which is my preferred length. Um, so yeah. So my plan is to create more charts going forward that will fit, it fits my sock, but also, it's like your basic 56, 64, 72, right? So they're all divisible by eight. So my charts would also work with any, almost any sock pattern that you have that you prefer. Um, and so you can, when the pattern comes out, you'll have the option of purchasing the pattern or just purchasing the charts for a lower cost. Because I know there's lots of people who have their own go-to vanilla sock pattern um, that maybe they just want to add a little interest, add a little color work to it. So I wanted it to be able to work both ways um, and maybe a little bit more affordable just to buy the chart if you already have a sock pattern that you like. I'm planning on the test to run from January 1st until February 12th, so it'll be a six-week test. You'll only have to complete one sock in that time. Um, I know it's like a busy time of year and stuff like that, so I didn't want to put too much pressure on anybody. The pattern is being tech edited, so I know that a lot of people prefer testing patterns that have already been tech edited, so that will be done before I send out the pattern to anybody. 
So yeah, that is the Fleur sock with the Crown of Daisies expansion pack. Um, that is all my finished projects. I have an update on some works in progress that I showed you before we left on our trip. And I wanted to show you how much uh, I managed to get done. Now, I have been home for a week and I have knit on this. I've knit on one of them since we've been home because it's a test and I wanted to keep going on it. Um, but I'll put up pictures of where I was before we left and pictures of where we are, of where I am now. I'll show you the first one. So this is my Tolsta T Fingering Weight by Rebecca Klo of the Crea Bear. If you have watched my other videos, you know I'm a little obsessed with her and her patterns. Um, so a couple things that I'm changing about this pattern. Um, I did do a fold over neckline just to kind of give it a bulkier neckline a little bit. And I am doing um, broken rib pattern. So you'll see, you can kind of see it. So I did a one by one collar, folded it over, knit it down and then continued on with the broken rib stitch because I wanted this to be reminiscent of the Friday tee by Petite Knit, which unfortunately is not a size inclusive pattern, which is why I'm not knitting it. Um, the Tolsta tee is like a base pattern. It has DK weight numbers and fingering weight numbers. So like you could knit anything from it if you just switched it a little bit. And Rebecca and her testers, they tried a bunch of different things. So there's like lace patterns added, there's stripe options, there's color blocking, like there's all kinds of different things that people have done. So you'll be able to get lots of inspiration from that. Um, now my gauge was a little bit different. I think the gauge on the fingering weight is 24 stitches per inch and I'm at 28 stitch stitches per inch. But I really liked the fabric that I got with the 28 stitches. So I just decided, um, I did the math and I needed to go up one size for it to fit me the way I wanted it to. So I think normally I would knit like a size five or six depending on what ease I wanted. And with this one, I'm knitting the size seven. And then I'm just gonna keep doing increases and try it on until the yoke depth is what I want and then stop. It's a raglan design, like I've, I've knit a few of these and they're very easy to modify the, the yoke depth, which is nice. Um, so this stitch marker is where I was before we left. And this is how far I got in the two weeks. Now, keep in mind, I also was knitting my sock for three of the days that we were gone. And I have a test knit that I really focused on. But this I brought with me for like my the airport layover airplane knitting, which I don't think I got to knit at all on the airplane because uh, we were traveling with a one year old. So that was interesting. Eight hour flight would not recommend. Um, yeah, so this is my first, I think this is my first fingering weight garment. Um, it's going slow, slow and steady. I feel like I knit forever and it's like two rounds and then those two rounds are like a centimeter. So this is definitely going to be a long-term project. I am not thinking that I'm going to get this done this winter, but it's it's a very mindless project because you know each round is either knit one or knit one purl one and it's really easy to tell where my increases are and everything like that so this is a pretty mindless knit i can knit on it i can pick it up and know where i am very easily so it'll be a long-term project that will get done eventually and uh 
I absolutely love the yarn. So this is the Crafty Bird in Fallen Leaves. And I absolutely love, love this yarn. That's what it looks like in the ball. So I have three balls, which is 300 grams, which I'm not 100% sure if it's going to be enough. But my goal is I wanted to do long sleeves. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to knit the body as long as I want the body to be. And then when I'm done the body, I'm going to see how much yarn I have left, split it in two and just do the sleeves as long as I can. You know, if I end up having longer short sleeves or three quarter sleeves or long sleeves, like that's fine with me. Um, I would rather have the body the length that I want it to be. And then I'll see what happens with the sleeves. And I'll be happy no matter what. So it's a good attitude to go into it with, I think. <laughs> Um, the next project that I have been working on is the is the Freddy Pullover by Emily Chen of M Knits on Instagram. Uh, so, oh, of course, I am halfway through a row. Oh well. So this is I had. Okay, that's like three inches of the back done before we left. I finished the knitting the back. So, okay. So this is a drop shoulder design, which means you knit the back first and then you pick up for one side and knit it, pick up for the other side and knit it, then join everything in the round and keep going. So I finished knitting the back as far as it needed to go. I picked up the one side and knit it as far as it needed to go. Um, and that's as far as I got while we were on vacation. I think I hadn't quite finished the left side. Um, and then when I got home, I finished the left side, picked up the right side. And um, I, I think I have like five more increases or something to do. I think I have eight more rows to do. Anyway, eight, 10, 12, something like that, rows to do. Um, and then I can connect it in the round. <sighs> and then it'll just be smooth sailing. So this pattern is the pattern that I showed in my cabled sweater roundup that I decided to cast on first. Um, also because I decided to cast this on first because she did a test. So this pattern is released. Um, she had a hard time finding testers for some of the larger sizes. So my size had not been fully tested, uh, which meant that she sent me the pattern for free and I am like giving her my notes and some feedback on the test. Um, I absolutely love the way that this one looks like this is cables, but it's it's less of the traditional braid cables and more of like a herringbone, which I just think is really different and unique. And then there's some twisted stitches and some ribbing and then some knit one below. And it's just it's so it's such an interesting pattern it really keeps me involved the whole time. Like there's always something to do, which I really like. Um, it's also really easy to read your stitches from both sides, which I really like because the chart, when I first looked at it, it was pretty intimidating, the chart. I've never really worked a fully charted pattern before, but once I got through casting on the back and doing what I needed to do for the back, it was really easy. It's like, okay, well, this is a twisted stitch, which means it's gonna be a twisted stitch all the way down. Right. And then there's always a certain amount of knit stitches and then a certain amount of purl stitches. And it's just re really easy to read the stitches that you're doing, which I really like. So I don't actually need the charts anymore because I'm just reading what the stitches are already doing, which I really like. 
So I think that once this, once I get to connect it in the round, the body of this is just gonna fly. And then I'll do the sleeves and then we'll be good to go. So I'm very excited about that. The Freddy pullover, I just wanted to give some details on the pattern. Um, there are 10 sizes ranging from 98 centimeters to 188 centimeters, which is 38 inches to 74 inches. Uh, with a recommended 20 to 25 centimeters or 8 to 10 inches of ease. I am knitting size 6, which gives me 20 centimeters or about 8 inches of ease. So I haven't tried it on yet because it's not connected, but I'm looking forward to seeing how it will fit once I am at the point where I can connect in the round and give it a good try on. But so far, it's going really well. And I really like the yarn too. The yarn is um, Hobie Highland Wool, which I've knit with before and I really, really like it. It's a 100% Highland Wool. I don't know where that comes from. Um, it's non-superwash, but it's very soft and it's almost like heathered. Like I've gotten a few different colors. There's a lot of depth to all of the colors and I really, really like that. And I'm holding it together with a strand of the Diablo mohair, which um, I've heard some people say that they love it. Some people say that they hate it. I think it's a great budget-friendly option. Um, I think it's like half mohair, half acrylic polyester or something like that. Like it's not a, it's not a silk mohair. It's a mohair with man-made fibers um but it's a good budget-friendly option I don't find it to be itchy um we'll see how it wears I haven't worn it yet obviously but um yeah I really am enjoying working with it so those are all the projects that I have been working on but I wanted to give you guys an update on some of the yarn I purchased while we were in Denmark. So my husband, the company that he works for, his, the head office is in Denmark. So he needed to go for a couple weeks for some training and we decided that uh, our son and I would go along with him for the experience, for the yarn. <laughs> so uh, that was really fun. I ended up going to a few different yarn stores. Um, I went to a Hobie store, which I was very excited about. I went to Knitting for Olive in Copenhagen, which I was so excited about. Um, and there was like a little local yarn store that I went to that was like a three minute walk from our hotel, which was so awesome. So the local yarn store is where I got the Lang Merino and the BC Garn Baby Alpaca for the gifts that I knit. And then I also bought this. So uh, the name of the store is Garden and Craft and I was talking with the owner and uh, this is her hand dyed yarn. I just, I could not resist this. So this is 54% alpaca, 24% silk, 22% mohair, which I don't, I've never seen that combination before. Um, it is a lace weight. I think it'll knit up fluffier than that though, because like one strand, it's pretty fluffy. I don't know if you can like see the halo on it, but it's, it's very fluffy. Um, it is 25 grams is 200 meters. And this is a 100 gram ball. So it's 800 meters in this which again, I just think is awesome because often you get it in 25 gram balls and then you got to worry about like changing with hand dyed yarn. Sometimes you have to worry about like uh, uh, changing skeins to make sure that it doesn't get all funky in between like different balls of yarn. But so it's really cool that this is just one full hank. Um, I, I absolutely love the colors of it. So it's got like this really rosy color and then some like banana yellow. But then if I, if you look on the inside and in here, you got like some darker like maroon and then bright 
yellow mustardy speckles. So I am very excited to get this wound up into a cake to see what all the colors are like. Um, at, when I went to Knitting for Olive, I bought some of their heavy merino in mushroom rose to hold together. It doesn't look like it totally matches, but I just wanted like a very neutral pinky undertone color, which this is coming up very sandy. It's a lot pinkier. It's a lot pinker. Pinker? Pinkier? It's a lot more pink <laughs> in, um, in real life. So I think that it will really let the um, alpaca mohair really shine. It's not like going to compete, I don't think, but I'm looking forward to knitting up a swatch and seeing what those are going to look like. Um, what else did I get? Um, let's stick with the knitting for Olive. So I got a few balls of their Merino, which is fingering weight, and some of their mohair, silk mohair, which their mohair is so soft. It's so, so soft. I got both colors in slate green, which, oh man, they're so pretty. This one is like a very heathered green color. It almost has like some pickle green flecks in there. And so I got enough of this to make three hats, uh, one for me, one for my husband and one for our son. So we're all gonna have matching dark green hats. Um, fun fact, my husband and I, both our favorite colors is green. So he helped me pick this out. And I am, I think I'm going to do a muscle burrow hat, um, which is by Isolde Teague. It's like a double layered, uh, just plain stockinette hat. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Just because it'll be nice and warm. My husband is like always freezing cold. Um, I think it'll just be really nice and warm. So that's what I'm gonna do with those. Um, I got some pure silk. Now I already had, oopsies, I already had these two colors, which is copper and olive. I bought two balls of each of this, um, which is not enough to make me, to make myself, to make myself, uh, the pattern that I wanted. I want to do the Slightly Sassy V by Amy Schur and I needed two more balls. So I decided to get this one and I'm going to do a striped version and I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to order the stripes. Like we got three different options here, right? So if you have any opinions, I feel like maybe this way. I don't know. I haven't decided how I'm going to um, stripe them yet, but my plan is to make a slightly sassy V with these three colors. So I have six balls total, two of each of these to make that. Uh, the other thing I bought was some, when I was in Hobie, I bought some of their friends cotton silk because uh, I am starting a test for Imogen. Oh, what's the, I feel bad. What's her designer name? Oh, anyway, I'll link it below. Um, she has an absolutely gorgeous pattern that is in testing um, that I wanted to buy yarn for while I was in Denmark. I need to swatch still. Um, it's, it's like a honeycomb cable. So this is going to be the background color. And then this is going to be the honeycomb like lace almost. It looks like that's going to be over top. I'll insert a picture of what the, the pattern is going to look like, but I just thought that those are going to be so pretty. It's a summer t-shirt, um, which I think is absolutely awesome. Like, yes, it's December, but first of all, like it's DK weight, but still, that takes a long time. Um, it's cables, which are complicated. Like, I think it is so amazing that there is a test right now 
for a spring summer shirt. Like you need to, especially for the larger sizes, like four weeks is not enough time for a test. You need to give people enough time. They are doing a free service. Okay, yes, they get the pattern early. Um, it's not tested yet. Like they have to give you feedback. It's not just about getting a free pattern. Like they're weighing yarn, they're checking for mistakes. They are checking that the instructions are correct. They're checking that the charts are correct. You need, need to give people enough time to finish the test, to be able to release it in the season that you want. So I think Imogen is doing a, an amazing job running this test in the dead of winter so that we all have enough time to finish the test properly before she releases it. I just, I think that that is something that we need to talk about more and that designers need to do. I could go on and on about this. I think that it is fabulous that I am doing a test in December for a garment that's not going to be released until spring or summer. That is how you do a test that is not going to stress out the people that are doing the test for you. Anyway, um, the other thing that I got that is not super exciting is um, I didn't have enough yarn for the Freddy pullover. I knew going into it that I didn't have enough um, and I just figured that I would buy some online. But then when I found out we were going to Denmark, I'm like, oh, I'll just buy some when I go to Hobie. That's all the yarn I got recently. But the other thing I wanna talk about that I am so excited about that I came home to is my Quartzmith from Autumn. Uh, Autumn of Autumn Eden Goodman. She runs the Size Inclusive Collective that you've heard me talk about before. Um, disclaimer, I did not purchase this from her. She did send it to me for free. Um, just as a thank you, because I am um, a moderator on the Discord that she runs for the Size Inclusive Collective, which I was not expecting. Like, that was so sweet of her to send me one for free. Um, I absolutely love this. This has been so much fun. Like, in the evening when my husband and I are watching TV, I am just whipping up some I-cord. So this is an I-cord maker, knitter. Um, if you've ever had to make I-cord, any length of I-cord for anything, you know how time intensive it is. Um, it's one of those things that it's like we do, but we maybe don't enjoy it. So this is awesome because like you're just wrapping and pulling, wrapping and pulling. Like you don't have to worry about sliding stitches back and forth. It is great for people that maybe have some fine motor skill um, differences um, or just don't want to have to knit miles and miles of I-cord. I've also seen videos online of people using it for an I-cord bind off mind blowing. I want to try that for sure. Um, I haven't had the opportunity to try it with a bind off yet, but I'm really looking forward to that. Um, I made a headband. Mm, it's not here. Let me go get it. Please hold. We're back. So I made this headband and put the flowers on it. How cute is that? Um, so I made, I had two 10 gram balls of fingering weight yarn and I held it together to make like a DK weight I cord. So out of that 20 grams, I made 11 feet, over 11 feet, 11 and a half feet of I cord. So like I made all of these flowers out of it. And what I did was I just knit up all the I-cord and then I decided what length I wanted to create each of the flowers. And then I cut it up into sections. And then when you cut it up, you get like a little strand of where you cut and you just weave it through the three loops and then you're done. So like it looks like it would have taken so long to knit all of this I-cord and it didn't. And I really like it. It um. I could have done a better job of spacing out the flowers, but I think that they are very cute. 
and it will keep my ears nice and warm but also allow me to have a messy bun because I am a mother so often my hair goes up into a messy bun so that you know my son doesn't pull it or eat it or something um, so instead of having a hat that I can't wear a messy bun with I have a headband that I can wear a messy bun with and I'm very very happy with how it turned out um, yeah, so that is the Cordsmith. You can purchase them directly through Autumn um, if you go to her Instagram and send her a DM. Um, I believe that she is working towards putting together um, a website that people can buy them from, but she like made one post and it went crazy viral. So she is just swamped with trying to keep up. Like, I don't even know how she possibly could keep up with DMs and stuff because of it, but I'm really very, very happy for her because, you know, she does so much work for size inclusivity for free. Um, so she deserves all of the success in the world. Um, yeah, so I think that's everything that I wanted to talk about today. Um, that was a lot. I can see that this video is at like 55 minutes. Hopefully through the magic of editing, I can make it a little bit shorter for you guys and I'm hoping that it won't take me another six weeks to film another one of these because there's just so much to talk about when I wait that long. So um, I hope you enjoyed. Um, if you made it this far and you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to subscribe and like if you liked it um, so that you don't miss any more of the videos that I put out. As I mentioned at the beginning, you can find me as Florange Apparel here on YouTube and also on Instagram and Etsy. And don't forget to look out for that sock test application if you would like to help me test my very first pattern. And until next time, happy crafting! Mm -hmm.